Hello boys and girls, welcome back to my next episode, Nigel here from NigelTrial.com. So today I want to share with you what's the lowest amount of money that you need to invest to retire and live off your dividends. Okay, so I like to compare um, dividend stocks to, a, to an apple tree or a fruit tree for that matter. Um, let's go to the next slide. So every fruit tree, dividend stock that's like a fruit tree will produce fruits for you. So the fruit tree is a public listed company that distributes profit in terms of dividend. And the fruit that's created is the dividend, right? And there are, there's two benefits to dividend stocks. To the company, there's more investor loyalty. So as the company pays out dividends to the um, shareholders, people like you and me who buy their stock, we would in turn want to spend more money or support the business more. For example, if you buy a, um, a, a dividend stock that is a shopping center, you may end up wanting to um, go to the shopping center more. Because you know, as you the more you go to the shopping center, you're supporting the business of the shopping center. If you're going to buy something anyway, why not buy something that you are, you are invested in, right? You might introduce your friends or family to go to that shopping center or to that uh, dividend stock business. And then because of that, the price of the stock would be relatively stable and keep growing year on year. And of course, with this extra money, they, they can expand. Okay, that's for the benefit of the company. But as a dividend stock shareholder, okay, there's at least three key benefits as what Motley Fool shares. Okay, um, the income is predictable. Most of dividend stocks, like they pay out the income regularly. We're talking about, let's say, they pay out 3, 4, 5% per year. They pay out this amount every quarter or every half a year it's predictable it's kind of it's a bit like sort of like a salary right um that's reduced risk it's not as though you put hundred thousand into a new business and you may possibly earn money remember 90 95 percent of new businesses fail in the first year in the second year 90 95 percent that survive fail Right, but with um, dividend stock, these are public sector companies. There's a lot of regulation. They need to be of certain size. A lot of um, controls in place, so they're fairly stable. But because there's so much control, so much management, so much layers as well, the returns are not going to be sky high. You know, like a very successful business can earn you hundreds of thousands a year in you know, hundred thousand percentage. But most of the time, dividend stocks will give you between three to ten percent returns per year. And then, of course, you can profit without selling your stock. You know, because they pay you a dividend, this dividend is cash, it goes straight into your bank account normally. In the olden days, they send you send you checks, but uh, it doesn't quite make sense. Checks can go missing. So right now, dividends are banked straight into your bank account, which is nice because sometimes I just, hey, I got, bank, I got money in my bank, without realizing it. Of course, I know, back of my head. But that's one of, one of the few wonderful things about dividend stocks. So like I shared earlier, I take every single dividend stock like a fruit tree. And in this case, I'll show you, I show you. always like to use Apple Tree. So how a dividend stock works is that the company pays out part of their profits as dividends. So for example, if this ABC company declares that you know um, you get twenty five cents per share, and if you own five hundred shares, you receive five hundred shares times twenty five cents per share, a total of one hundred twenty five dollars. So that's the simplest way to understand how dividend stock works. Okay. So the real question to answer this video's question, right? What's the lowest amount of money you need to invest so that you can either retire or live off your dividends? Hmm. Okay, let's go into it, right? So to answer this question, we must answer three sub-questions in succession, right? Okay, first, question number one. Okay, how much do you spend a year? Okay, you must know this because if you don't know this, we can't, we can't measure. We can't measure, you can't answer the question, right? of how, what's the lowest amount you need to retire. So, list down all your most necessary expenses, okay? You talk about the place that you live, your rent, your mortgage, your place, right? Um, then let's that, talk about your food, your drinks, your groceries, okay? It includes your takeout or dining out, okay? Ideally, as minimal as possible, okay? Then your utilities, this goes for your internet, your phone, your subscriptions, and things like uh, taxes, or dumb money, oh, let's call it dumb money, eh? Dumb money. Dumb mistakes, as I say. Sometimes you just um, forget about a, to return a library book and then there's a fine, 10 bucks. Okay, it's dumb money, right? I mean, I, we don't like it to happen, but it happens, etc. 
So we, let's use a very simple example that you can live on a fairly simple frugal lifestyle that costs you 3000 a month. So that's, remember, that's the first example, 3000 a month. So let's go to the next question. Okay, how much do you earn and save a month? Okay, so this is based on how much you answer in from the question one. So question one, we I give you an example that based on you spend 3000 bucks a month. Okay, so if you, if, you have, if you earn a net take home pay of 4500 <laughs> 4, a month, that means we can take 4500 minus 3000 uh, which means you can save and invest 1500 a month. Okay, that's, that's the basic presumption for question two. This is the easy part. Okay, then the hard part, the harder part is that how much returns percentage per year per dividend stock. Okay, um, there's so many dividend stocks out there and some of them pay, not, not, you know, I put that range of 3 to 10%. Technically speaking, some are 0%. 0% tend to be growth stocks, but most of most dividend stocks are at least 1%, at least 1% to 10%. Okay, and this percentage is really on in, this difference in percentage is really big. Okay, when compounded over the years. Okay, and let me show you because we got to do the case study of it, right? Okay, let's do a case study, right? Of uh, if you earn 4,500 a month take home, you spend 3,000 a month, that means you're 1,005. So what happens when you have a when you choose three percent return stocks versus ten percent return stocks? How's the difference? Is it a big difference? What do you think? It's a big difference, seriously. Okay, let's do. I'm gonna take off my video for a while. Okay, can I, can I take it off? Hmm, I can't. Okay, anyway, I'm gonna put it here. Okay, so based on this, okay, this is the first case study. Okay, if you Spend three thousand a month. You make four thousand five hundred a month. You have thousand five, and if your yield is three percent, what's the lump sum you need based on the yearly spending of thirty six thousand, which is three thousand a month times twelve, right? So you take your calculator, calculator. Okay. You take thirty six thousand divided by zero point zero three, which is three percent. So you need one point two million lump sum. Okay, invested. Okay, let's back calculate this. So 1.2 million, okay, times 0 0.03. Yes, and divide, this is how much you get per year. If you get a 3% stock, divided by 12, it's 3,000 a month. Correct, the numbers is correct. Compare this to the one that makes 10%. Right? Again, same thing. You spend 3,000 a month, you make 4,000, you spend 3,000 a month, but you make 4,500 a month. So again, the plus of thousand five hundred a month can be invested. Okay, if the yield is ten percent, how much lump sum do you need? Okay, to retire, right? Based on thirty k spending, thirty k spending a year. Okay, again, do the same thing. Take thirty six thousand divided by ten percent. You only need three hundred sixty thousand based on ten percent return per year to get thirty six thousand worth of dividends. Does the max make sense? Okay. 360,000 if your dividends is 10% times 10% 36,000 in dividends divided by 12 3,000 the numbers make sense so you see a 3% per annum dividend stock versus a 10% can be a very 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 big difference see the lower the returns the bigger amount of cash you need invested okay that's point number one of question three point number two okay again let me just take out my face. Okay. If you compare the 3% and 10%, you realize just now I told you that with a lower percentage return in dividend, you need more amount. Then you take the same case study and then you, you run the numbers. How long do it take to amass 1.2 million? Because we don't, most of us don't, don't have a lump sum, right? Of 1.2 million lying around. So we need to slowly, um, invest from day one and reinvest each time we get dividends and then keep investing all the way right so if you take 1500 a month you times 12 months okay 1500 times 12 months equals 18,000 right so that's how I put 18,000 here 18,000 based on 3% returns per year you need 36.5 years to hit 1.2 million that means if you are 20 years old today, you start investing 18,000 a year, 
it takes you 36.5 years. You will be 56.5 years old before you can hit this 1.2 million. Conversely, if your returns are 10% per annum, right? Okay. And you can invest 18K a year. At 10% return, you will see that you only need 11 years. 11 years, you know, versus say 36 years is a big difference. So you see, you take note, note number two. The higher the return, the quicker and less time you need to build up your amount. That means you invest on first year, then you reinvest and you, you keep investing. So this is why it's very important that you pay attention to the dividend yields. If you're, if you're definitely looking at the dividend game. So look at Philip Morris International, okay? Their return over here, if you can see the one in orange, the first picture on top, on top here is 5.21%, which is decent actually. It's not bad. 5% actually is decent. But if you look at the Southern Copper over here at the bottom, you see their returns are 10.4%. That's like a double the rate. So it would change a lot in the way you amount of dividends you get. Instead of getting 5%, you can get 10%. Instead of getting 1%, you can get 10%. Okay? But of course, not all dividend stocks are made equally. You've got to dive a bit deeper. But in this video, I just want to show you that the difference between um, how much you spend, if you can save more, you, you did less, and you can retire even earlier. And you, if you can find dividend stocks that pay you even more sustainably, again, these two combined is a wonderful uh, marriage made in heaven. So... I see my dividend stocks as um, fruit trees, okay? I mean, I over here I put all as apple trees, okay? But you can have uh, mango trees, orange trees, watermelon plants, okay? What can you do? So my most of my standard answers for people is to keep working, you earn and save as much as possible, and invest 75 to 90% of your savings into stable dividend stocks. Stable dividend stocks means that these stocks are paying the same percentage of uh, returns every single year and keep growing, okay, doesn't drop other than, uh, you know, some unusual year activity such as COVID, you know. Um, and then number three, you will in reinvest 50% uh, of your dividends and you keep on rinsing and repeating until your dividends is more than your living expense. And at this point, right, you get to choose, okay, do you want to retire? If you retire, then you can just choose to repeat 0.3 in 4, which is reinvest 50% of your dividends and then uh, rinse and repeat. Or you just continue, set the scope, right? You should keep working, invest 75, 90% of savings into stock. Up to you. It's really your call. But the goal is to acquire and build um, a fruit orchard, a fruit farm, if you want to call it, fruit orchard, fruit farm of different fruits, of different dividend stocks, such that it will keep paying you dividends and dividends after month after month after month where then again you don't have to worry about money anymore you're just living the passive income lifestyle and that's the concept that i'm trying to drive through again and again and again and again okay this needs to be the foundation of your um, personal finance strategy because with passive income that's stable it's a lot more stability that's brought into your life you know it, this framework will work wonderfully for you for the mid to long term, you know, do you want to retire early? Sure. Do you want to, you want to um, retire your spouse? Sure. It's really give you a lot more options, but you got to be very patient because fruit trees take time to grow, take time to produce fruits, and you need to reinvest the fruits that you get, the dividends that you get. So it's, it's a mid to long term game, so you got to be very patient. So this amount that you need to retire before from your dividends. Uh, let me go back to this one, right? Okay. So a simple one. If you can save, if you can invest 1500 a month, if the yield is 3%, you will need at least 1.2 million. Okay? But if the yield is high at 10%, you will need way lesser. See, 1.2 million to 360,000 is about 3.5 times lesser. It's a big gap, you know? So, that's all I have for you today. Take care. Bye.